This is a continuation of our part two of the 2D to 3D conversion that we did. Uh, basically taking the, the shovel tip or the spade that we did and taking it to a drawing level uh, back to a 2D. Um, as you remember, we did a cut list here and uh, we went in and updated that cut list. And we wound up with four different cut list items. Uh, each item is, uh, that one has only one in it, this one has two, uh, if you open those up you can see it, uh, this one has two, uh, and then of course the last one has two as well. So um, SolidWorks takes great pain to uh, separate out the like instances of your weldments uh, so that you can get a good cut list of what needs to be done in the manufacturing facility. Now. With 2010, we can go in and do a uh, properties on these uh, cut lists and actually show the cut list here that you can see across here. This is, uh, this is one that we've got set up uh, using a cut list modified, which is uh, completely customizable. That includes an item number, quantity, part number, description. Uh, you can see there the material and a weight. Now, right now, the material is not specified in this particular one, and we can kind of go back through and see that, uh, yeah, the material is not specified. The weight is, but the material is not. Uh, property summary, you can look at each property individual, and you can see there again that the material is not. So let's go in and set up our material, and it's just as quick as right-clicking on the material and telling it to either edit the material or just picking one from the commonly used items. In this case, we're just going to use plain carbon steel. And if we go back to our cut list again, to properties, we see now that we have plain carbon steel here. Under material, all these are plain carbon steel as well. So everything is showing up correctly. Now, currently we don't have anything in here as far as part numbers are concerned. We can go in there and place these part numbers at this time. Uh, we could put one, two, three there. Uh, on this one, we may put one, two, four. Um, on this one we may put one two five and one two six just to kind of give them a part number that's distinguishable uh, of course the material and the weight there uh, the description that uh, we'll just leave the description alone you can type up anything that you want to in there uh, to create your own uh, customizable now, that is also customizable completely it allows you to keep up with anything as far as uh, any of the information that you need to keep up with for your parts uh, whether it's bought inside bought from outside and brought in or if it's built inside uh, the cost of that material uh, who's assigned to make that material the vendor of choice that kind of thing is all customizable and available to be placed in here at that time now we're going to go quickly and do a drawing of this. I'm just going to do an ANSI drawing standard. We're going to use the C landscape. Now we can use our drag views from our view palette. And I'm just going to drag in my front view. And I'm just going to put a right view out there for the time being. Uh, and maybe uh, an, an isometric of sorts over here in the corner. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and put in a uh, my weldment table. So I'm going to click weldment table, click the view that I want the weldment table to be made from, and I've already got the cut list modified selected uh, over here in my table template. So I'm just going to click OK to accept it, and I'm going to drag and drop it and drop it in place. Now, as you can see, that quickly I placed that uh, table into my drawing. Now this is an Excel spreadsheet is all it is. You see the columns and the rows. I'm going to go in and actually add a uh, another a row underneath this last one. And I'm just going to call this, and yes I'm going to break the link, and I'm going to call this the totals row. And I'm going to go in here and click here. I'm going to use my equation portion of this um, file to tell it that I want to go in and do a sum and I want to highlight all of these uh, numerical values and then click OK. So you see here 
that by doing that I actually get a total weight uh, right there on my cut list of all the properties of all the parts that are going to be in this in this particular uh, model. Now I didn't put a top uh, view up here because I wanted to go in and do a uh, section view for you. Now with the section view I can go in and just draw a line across the uh, section here and I don't like it like that so I can flip the direction and flip it over and click OK to place it and you can see here uh, that crosshatch has been added to this depending on the material, material assigned crosshatch and you can see here where the holes actually go through my two uprights. Uh, that's really a quick way of doing this. Uh, I can also do one other type of quick section view in detail and I can just go in and do a, uh, a quick detail circle and do nothing but just the area that I want to detail. Now what's amazing about this is this is live information. If I grab the circle here and downsize it, then I only get a smaller, a smaller window showing up up here in my view. I can then grab the center of it and actually move it around a little bit so I get just the section or just the parts that I want in that section view and that's all I want. Now by default, uh, this section view is actually put in at a different scale so it's larger so you can actually see it better. And finally, we're going to do uh, another annotation. Uh, we're going to actually do auto balloon. I know a lot of you out there uh, have struggled with auto balloon in the past. And, uh, or not with auto balloon, but with ballooning period uh, because you have to go to great pains to identify each part. All I've done is selected the auto balloon from my annotation toolbar, selected my uh, isometric view, and you can see there that I've got the balloons placed. I've got it set to where it ignores multiple instances. I have different arrays that I can choose, square, circular, top, bottom, left, and right. I can go down and actually select different shapes of those balloons. And you see there the, all the shapes that we have, triangular, uh, box, diamond, pentagon. Uh, we can either do a circular split line, which will actually incorporate a couple of different information uh, parts there, uh, your item number and your quantity, or you can drop it down and create any type of uh, information that you're wanting here uh, through custom properties and whatever. So we're going to actually just click to accept these. Now at that point you can move these around to make them more pleasing or more uh, uh, the way you like them so that they look a little bit better. Now anytime that you bring this into SolidWorks, we now have a complete weld, weldment, uh, weldment cut list that we can send to the shop floor. We have a drawing, we have a section view, we have a detail view. We can balloon uh, this particular part and all in just a matter of minutes in SolidWorks.